another repot. Ah, yes, another repot. Thank you for being here. This is not going to be just an ordinary repot. I mean, I love all my repots, but I've been anticipating this repot since I found that this orchid has been living with Fusarium probably since the day she arrived in my collection. The discovery was made on the 23rd of July when I did an Orchid Chores diary video and was going through pseudobulbs, the difference between rot, cold damage, old age. Turns out, orchid number three that I was cleaning up and showing an example of, the golden cellar here, had some suspicious color in the rhizome in the back where the bulbs had dried off because of age. And I've been waiting, waiting for roots to show up because I'm gonna go into this orchid. I wouldn't need to repot her at this point in time because she has plenty of room, but I want to go in even further into the rhizome and see what we are up against because clearly there's a root problem in here. Now, you can see how desiccated the pseudobulbs are. There's something else going on. However, I'm not seeing any signs of Fusarium on the new root that I can see because if there were something really, really wrong, and she was struggling with it, then that root wouldn't look so lush, juicy, and green. There would already be some kind of discoloring, blackening, browning. So it's like half and half, and that's why. Yes, another repot, and I am very excited. Now, cautionary tale. An orchid that has been happily living with Fusarium, unbeknownst to us because she's growing well, there is nothing that looks like Fusarium, she is blooming regularly, there is no color break or anything wrong with the blooms, the bloom duration, all those factors can now actually trigger Fusarium to activate because every repot is stressful for an orchid. Of course, when I received her, she was in media that I didn't want her in, she is in Lekka and self-watering for the past four years. So back in the day when I received her and then put her into my setup, new media, acclimating, transitioning, that didn't trigger the Fusarium. There's no guarantee that now when I cut into her and if we find a purple ring in the rhizome, that the Fusarium cannot activate. So this is going to be hit or miss, but we'll find out in the months to follow. Now, another thing I wanted to mention before I really get in, and I appreciate you being here, but this is important if you didn't see the video with the Orchid Chores Diary, but another thing I want to mention is, I have been soaking this orchid, this is now the third time, with a Fysan solution that is supposed to then be absorbed by the roots, if there are any viable roots in the pot, to get some of that into her system and hopefully kill any possible progression of the Fusarium. This is her third soak since July 23rd. It may have actually killed the roots, but I'm following the instructions and we hope for the best. Another thing is everything around me here now has been documented. Everything I'm going to touch, use, where the water is going to spray, etc. And for that reason, I have already prepared myself a solution of water and bleach. This is at a concentration of one part bleach to 10 parts water. I'll be using that regularly as well on intervals with my hands, with my tools, etc. So I'm pretty much prepared for what's to come because afterwards all this has to be sterilized again and I will be using bleach at a much, much higher concentration. But for now, 1 to 10 will have to do. Okay, after all that jibber jabber, let's go in. Afterwards, if you're wondering what I'm going to do with my leka, I'll discuss that at the end. Timestamps and everything will be in the description. You see that tag? That can go into the bleach solution already. I'm really excited to get into this. If I lose her, so be it. But, you know, doing this is important at this point in time with new roots growing. Let's see how easily she comes out of the pot. Very easily. So the roots are super, super unhappy. Let's see if we can change that for the future. Now, I am not recommending that you soak your orchid that has Fusarium in Fysan 20. It is just something that I do because that is what is being advised on the interwebs. So if the root loss is because of the Fysan, then here we are. I'm not saying that that is the reason. It could also be because the Fusarium has kicked in. 
So many factors, but that's why we're going to clean her up good and proper and set her into a same size pot. I'm not going to make the pot any smaller. I don't think. <laughs> Plans may change. Plans may change. But for the time being, my anticipation is to maintain the pot size and the mixed lecker of large and small. But if I cut back far enough, it may look really, really silly and I'll put her into a smaller pot. This root is still viable. So we have death, but we also have some life. And I'll be able to get rid of horrible fern roots. The fern itself has long, long gone because <laughs> I kept picking away at the leaves. But let's see. I know, right? You're probably thinking, why is she so excited about Fusarium? Well, I can tell you that anything that makes me increase my learning curve is always exciting to me. Losing an orchid, of course, is not the ideal scenario, but having said that, at least with my channel, if I lose an orchid now, I can actually share that information, and then it was not for naught, if that makes sense. And I get answers. So let's see. Because I want a clean visual for you, I'm going to cut dead roots off before cutting the rhizome. Meanwhile, I could already start cutting, 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 but I want this to be as clean as possible so that I'm documenting it properly. Seeing as I've waited so long, I might as well do it this way instead of going the fast route. Sorry for the clanging of the gate in the background if I can't edit that out. See, we have a viable eye back here. Depending on what we find, we may have a proper division or we may actually need to sacrifice a nice what could have been a nice division because also I'm going into the season that is not going to be ideal for raising a division that is stressed by maybe fossarium in the back this orchid is also in sheath I'm not put off by that one bit even if she decides not to bloom that's fine we're going to get ourselves some answers here and after this project nothing else is going to be done except a major, major sterilization of everything, which is going to take a couple of hours in itself. I've already done everything with my orchids that I need to do today. Thank goodness it's a little bit of an overcast day, so I won't need to be doing too much more. And that gives me sort of the feeling for the next 48 hours <laughs> that I don't cross-contaminate. Of course, if we don't find anything, Woohoo! I will have bought myself some time and we can get down to editing videos that are in the pipeline and I just don't have time for at the moment. Actually, you know what I was thinking of just going straight in and making like a proper division with the first cut and then we'll take it from there instead of going one, one, one. We'll see what we're going to find when I get into like half the orchid. Beautiful root tip right there. If that were, let's say, already active fusarium, that root tip would not be looking as lush as it does. All right, let's get you in and let's see what we're up against. Now let's talk about division. If this division were to be something that is useful when we get into it, I want to make sure that at least I have three growths and a new growth starting. Now it could also work with two growths and a new growth starting because that's where all the viable roots are. The back end would have absolutely no roots. But because at this point in time, I want to make sure that when I'm going to go in and hopefully find a clean rhizome, I have enough strength in the front because clearly she's very, very stressed already. So we are going to go in, forgetting the fact that maybe we would like to propagate this as a division. And we're going to go in and take out the back three. And then we can also maintain that eye if she remains healthy. 
and that could kick in another lead. So let's do this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Clear as day. There is no doubt about this at all. So, of course, I'm not going to be propagating this division. In actual fact, it's going to go into the burn pile. Right. Let's get some bleach. Put my secateur straight into the bleach. And a drop of bleach on there, just because I feel, ugh, sterilize, sterilize. Not that I think bleach does any good in this situation, but you know what? It gives me a better feeling. Right, now we're going to put some cinnamon on there. Let me show you, even the other end. Now, ideally, what I would want to do is keep going, keep going until I find the rhizome that is clean, if there is a clean rhizome, but I'm not going to risk that. I'm going to try and keep this orchid happy in the future, knowing she has fossarium. And while that dries, I am now going to get myself a smaller pot. I've changed my mind. She's going in a smaller pot, and then we'll hopefully, hopefully not lose this orchid because this could now really activate the fossarium and it could spread and then golden cellar will be part of a beautiful, beautiful memory. Right, one microfiber, smaller pot. I went from a 20 centimeter to an 18 centimeter pot. I had two microfibers in the previous pot, but now I don't need that. Let's see if we can fit the roots in to a smaller pot. I have as yet water to put into the pot so that I can fill around with lecker, but I don't want everything to be so buoyant while I attempt to get the roots in. And also her position clearly for me should be in the middle in case she lives and activates that eye that we saw previously in the back. Two more things I would like to do. First, I'm gonna show you the rhizome cut by cut by cut. I just had these in bleach because that's how I am. It doesn't make any difference now. They're gonna have to get re-sterilized. So there's one and there's two. Now, if you were to do this and you're trying to get to a clean rhizome, please, please, after every cut, sterilize your cutting tool again. Otherwise, you'll be spreading the spores from one cut into the next. So we have the back end that is for me, as far as I'm concerned, useless simply because of seeing the color, but it gives a great indication of, is it progressing into the front, back, next cut, next cut, and the cut after that was the one that we've got potted up. And I would say it is progressing. That is my diagnosis because there's very little of it right here. Very little. I have to look hard to see any right there. And there's a little bit more of it here. If we turn that around, huh, it's progressing peoples. So the fight for Golden Cellar is on because look at that concentration of purple ring there as opposed to back here. Yeah, okay, the fight for Golden Cellar is on. She is over there, all nicely potted up.
They're coming to take me away, haha! -ha. How about that for a rude interruption? Good grief! Oh, they've been flying around all day today. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. Golden Cellar is, well, we shall see what happens in the coming months. Now, let's talk about LECA or cleaning your inorganic media after discovering Fusarium. This is where I get really, really paranoid, okay? So, like I said, I wasn't going to be touching any other orchids today. Everything has been dealt with, but everything is going to be sterilized. So, you know, <laughs> happy days, why not? <laughs> but inorganic media is recyclable and we don't want to bin it. However, all of this is contaminated, including the new LECA that I used to fill up my new pot. This is contaminated because even though I've been using bleach in between certain steps just because I felt <laughs> a little bit better by it, um, I touched these. This is clean LECA, it's been sterilized, boiled, separated, but I touched both pots. So this and this is going to be cleaned again and for 24 hours I am going to have it soaking in a bleach solution that is of 50 parts of water and 50 parts of bleach. I do not bleach any other lecker for general repots but for in this case it gives me peace of mind 24 hours 50 50 water and bleach and then I am going to be boiling it and doing the same thing as I do with other lecker if I am not comfortable after it has been boiled and it's all about feeling comfortable then I will soak the boiled and sterilized lecker in another part of 50-50 water and bleach for another 24 hours. Then I will boil them again just to release the bleach, then soak them for 24 to 48 hours before even bothering to separate and store. In the past, I've never doubled up on that, but I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive about this one and the fact that the fusarium is actually stronger towards the front part of the orchid as opposed to the back part. And that makes me super wary, so I'm doubling up because that'll give me peace of mind. Know that in the past, I've never doubled up, but it's about our peace of mind when it comes to our orchids and how we recycle our inorganic media. The other alternative is just throw it away. No problem, no work. I am not going to do that. <laughs> our bleached sterilized tag can go back in the pot, as can 300 parts per million of fertilizer because roots and she has as yet to make that little growth a little bit more chubby and then she can go back on the shelf so now i'm just going to ask your opinion let me know in the comments yes golden seller is going to live or nope that's it this repot the cutting of the rhizome has triggered the fossarium and it will only now get more angry and it will take the orchid down maybe is not an option it's yes or no and if you are watching this for the first time, if you are not subscribed to my channel, follow the updates on this orchid, how it progresses in the months to come. Be it good or bad, consider subscribing and be here for those updates. Thank you so very much for watching. I've got the gardener going, I've got helicopters flying over the top. If you don't hear from me in three days, they've come and taken me away. <laughs> Have a beautiful day, everybody, though, on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.